What's going on, guys? I'm here with the lovely Danielle. And before we get started, we have to do a makeup check. And for you guys, I got some <laughs> makeup wipe removers. So you guys, I'm wiping my eyeshadow off for you. These people aren't going to be happy until I wipe my skin off with sandpaper. <laughs> I guess so, too. With all the chemicals in here, it sounds like stuff you would spray on your uh, your wheat crops. Desoglucoside. <laughs> and uh, now i got to wipe the chemicals off my face. But in the meantime... Danielle was an ex-vegan for a period of about a year and a half, and she does have an extensive plant-based diet history that she would like to share with you guys. So I'm going to let Danielle take it away from here. Well, um, I basically grew up in a household where we didn't eat a lot of meat at all, and um, I didn't have any of it in my diet, maybe like once or twice a week. Um, so the reason I went vegetarian at first which was around 8th grade, like 12, 13 years old, uh, is because it was at the time quite trendy and hip to be vegetarian. And um, I didn't eat, uh, maybe I eat, ate some fish from time to time, but that was it for me. And um, I also started developing at the time, maybe a year after becoming vegetarian, a disorder known as orthorexia, which is basically... When you get obsessed with putting only clean um, whole foods in your body, um, to to put it short, um, I was eating grains, but in the form of like brown pasta, brown rice, um, fruits, vegetables, Meat, fish, and eggs. some dark chocolate. And for about eight months, I managed to lose my period, um, and I also managed to lose nearly like 10 kg uh, which is 20 pounds which for my frame i'm five foot six it's it's quite a lot it's visible she went from about uh, 123 to like 100 pounds and you lost your period this wasn't even like a vegan diet you were still eating some protein right you were still eating animal some food? fish i was eating some some salmon maybe once a week um, and that's it. Maybe some eggs. The other was pretty much bread. <laughs> um, so yeah, I also was getting quite sporadic blood, um, from my nose, just gushing out whenever I got angry or agitated, which was a lot. Uh, I don't know why, but this diet would make me very, very defensive about it and also very offended easily at everything. I'm not talking only about, uh, plant based you know, just defending my plant-based choices or anything, just in general. Very Overly emotional and reactive to everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so after that, uh, pretty much a few months after that, I was forced to to stop it for my mom, who figured out that I wasn't getting my period, so obviously something was wrong. But you were still and very young at this point in time, right? Yes, yes, I was uh, 14, 15. Okay. So this was happening during my first year in high school, basically. Towards the end of my first year in high school, I got caught of what I'm doing, basically. Um, and my mom and I went to a, uh, a doctor, basically a gynecologist, that prescribed me some medication, um, fake hormones, to, to get me to have a period. And this obviously made me a bit chubbier as well. So I stopped doing that altogether, um, and I just went to basically a standard standard American diet, you could say, a mix of grains, fruit, veggies, some meats, not enough. Um, but because um, I was already obsessed, the orthorexia started because of my desire to get thinner, to get, you know, slim. I always wanted to be underweight. So I wanted to get back to that. I liked the way I looked back then a lot. And I didn't like the way I looked normally at like uh, 110 pounds. So I was looking into stuff 
to try out. And um, I was stuck in a horrible cycle. Meanwhile, of like binging and purging through exercise, through uh, starving myself, um, but always like low key, not, as not to, you know, concern my parents. So there wasn't big yo-yos in my weight or anything or my lifestyle. And then I started searching for, you know, some quick fix diet. Basically, I was looking for a miracle, you could say. This was probably early. Actually, late 2015, so towards the winter, and that's when I found um, the channel of Freely the Banana Girl, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So I started watching the videos because she was at the time she was making these videos about um, celebrities and criticizing their diet. So I just went in because of the drama. I wasn't even looking at you know what she ate or anything, and I started looking and I thought, oh my god, this woman is crazy but as i started getting into the videos and watching more and more it started making sense which is super weird uh just i was surprised in myself she had a lot of videos about a variety of topic like how much times you have to go to the toilet uh, according to her at least two times a day um she was making videos on like smoking cigarettes on um different dietary habits, different diets. It was interesting. So I started looking and obviously she's every, every the point of every video she makes is to uh, advertise her book and her uh, diet that she developed, which is called Row T4. And in the end of every video where she criticizes a celebrity, she says that this, this and this celebrity will be able to achieve their dream body only if they follow the, her diet, which is Row T4. So I was like, okay, this makes some sense, you know. We used to eat fruits according to her, um, you know, back in the day. And I was thinking about it, not thinking really logically, but thinking about it. Okay, so that's true. When, you know, when we didn't have any technology or agriculture, there, sure, there was like a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables. So we could just pick them out from the tree and, you know, just eat them. So I went... Uh, to her website, started looking at the Road to 4 diet and decided to, to start it. But I was lacking the motivation basically to keep up with it. So Freely is saying, and she bombards every one of her videos with scenes of animals being tortured very brutally. And she said that if someone still lacks the motivation to become a vegan, you should watch this movie Earthlings and then your opinion will definitely change. So, one day, I watched the movie and basically turned vegan overnight. Because the movie, to put it lightly, it exploits a lot of these images of brutally tortured animals. Um, and it takes a lot of statistics that if you actually do your own research, it's a bit far-fetched, to put it like this. Um, basically makes its own kind of argument. And if you pull out the statistics, objectively, they don't make much sense to what they said in the movie. But at the but time, I mean, you were, like, enwrapped in this. Like, you essentially, Freely was the first source of information you came across in your dietary journey. And you pretty much got sucked into the vegan cult without really looking at other options, right? Yes, and I have to admit something that I was very egoistical be. Although I really love animals and earthlings touched me, I was, I did became, I did become vegan because of the ethical side. The one thing that really, really, really pushed me to do it is because she promises this is the peak human diet, which leads to the peak human body. And at the time she was looking very muscular and very fit and very thin, um, very slim the way I like it, you know, kind of anorexic if you look at it now especially now she's gotten even thinner very sick looking if you ask me but at the time i was like oh she has the most perfect body she used to be fat because she always uploads of her like 10 years ago where she's kind of chubby but not really fat and she says this is me eating meat and this is me eating only uh vegetables and fruits so i, I was in it for the looks but I was saying I was in it for the ethics, if that makes sense. Okay. So I started doing the diet, which basically, if you look in the website, um, the recommendations is until 4 p.m. 
you eat raw. That's why it's called raw till four. So you eat as much fruit as possible. Um, it has to be around 2,500 calories, she said. And most of the fruits she shows and she eats and she recommends is bananas. So bananas, dates, uh, mangoes, all sorts of sugary, sugary fruit that is very exotic to where I live. So not I live a lot in of those in Bulgaria. <laughs> no, no, not a lot at all. Um, these are very expensive in Bulgaria all year round. Doesn't matter when. Uh, and they're also not ripe ever. So just to give you a bit of a background here, what we have is pretty much three or four months of fruits. And the fruits are very limited as choices like apples and pears and um, pears, sorry, um, strawberries maybe for one month. And that's it. And you don't really have much fruit besides that. Uh, bananas, avocados, these are extremely expensive. So this is for, you know, uh, up until 4 p.m. You eat as much as you can and put them in a shake, shake a blender. And then for dinner, you have a kilo or half a kilo of potatoes uh, chopped and baked in oven with no fat. That's like a must. Uh, and you make a sauce from um, canned tomato sauce plus half a cup of sugar, of coconut sugar, which... I'm sorry, but it's the same as sugar. <laughs> Does, doesn't matter if it's coconut or not. So you make the sauce and you basically pour it all over the potatoes to give them some taste and you munch on it. The thing is, I was eating constantly on this diet. Like, I was eating nonstop. And when my mom first saw me doing like a casual day in the diet where I put like seven bananas in the blender, she was like, what the hell are you doing? You're insane. This is a lot of sugar. And I was... I snapped back and we had this huge argument because I was like, no, this is fruit sugar. It's different. You don't, you don't understand. You're so close minded. And I was in a constant, like, fight with her from that moment on, pretty much, because she just, she, she, she thought it was crazy and everyone else did too. Uh, she said, I'm not going to pay for this diet because if you have, if you make the calculation, uh, you pretty much have to spend about like $15 a day to eat that much fruit. Uh, and that's only ba- the bananas. And I was basically giving money out of my pocket. I didn't have any money to eat at school or anything. I was just eating the bananas at home and then apples. Um, then I started noticing that I was gaining fat very, very rapidly, like very quick. I was really shocked. Because I was promised that within a few months of doing roti 4, your body naturally goes back to the way it's supposed to be, which is lean. And by the way, it's very ironical to me now, but she gives this um, example that animals, like for example, a cheetah eats what it's supposed to eat in its natural habitat. And that, that's why you never see fat cheetahs in, in the wild, right? And... At the time, that made complete sense. So we, as fruitarians, we have to eat fruits so that we go back to our natural state, which is, you know, lean. Um, I now realize that's like a good point for carnivore diet, actually. Well, I mean, but, uh, just being in Bulgaria, you never thought, like, in the winter time, like November, when you're watching Freely videos, like, you, you never looked out the window and said, where am I going to get all these exotic fruits? But man, it- <laughs> you think it's safe to say that the confidence you had that it would help you reach your physique goal was really what was instilling that, um, like your confidence in the diet in general, like just that idea that you were going to be skinny. Was that really the main driving factor? Do you think? So? Yes, yes, yes. And also not hurting animals. But as I said on a second, um, that was like on the back of my head. The thing is, the more, the more I realized the, that I was gaining fat, the more videos I watched where she kind of, in every video, she puts out um, sort of like a contra argument to whatever people might say to her, might say to to uh, contradict her diet. So she would say, okay, so you're gaining fat. Well, that is because you might be coming from a background of uh, eating disorder, are you? And I'm like, yes, 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 I am. She's like, okay, well, this means that you actually might need a few years to get to that body. And it just, it's a vicious cycle of, purely indoctrination, you know, just keeping you in that state where 
You're just expecting something to happen. It's never going to happen. You're detoxing. You're not doing it right. That's, your body's adjusting. I've heard that as All well. excuses. Yo, I did veganism right and I did it wrong as well. And both in, you know, someone like Freely's mind, both are better than not being vegan at all. So, um, yeah. You, well, said well, I, you saw a, a vlog where she lied and that she lost the weight by pretty much riding her bike every day, right? Well, basically, she used to have this blog. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Um, but in the blog, she wrote basically about her journey, uh, becoming from, you know, chubby, kind of chubby to like skinny as she is. She actually says to her followers that she did it because of raw till four. She actually only ate, ate raw food. Uh, so raw fruits like mangoes and stuff and cycled maybe like five, six kilometers a day. They also have another video, which I think is still up with uh, her ex-boyfriend where they tell the people that get fat on the road to four, oh, you're doing it right. Uh, oh, you're doing it wrong. You fat cunt. That's literally the video. So yeah, I was like, okay, I was exercising every day, uh, doing like, um, H I I T workouts. You know them? Yeah. The high intensity interval training. So you're getting yeah. right up, taking a rest. A lot. Right I was down. Yeah. maybe like an hour a day, uh, each day. And I was getting more and more fat. Yeah, maybe a bit more defined because of the workout, but still fat. I was gaining weight very, very, very fast. So I went from um, 50, be 50 kilos before the diet to maybe 65, 70 after the diet, which you can help me with the, with the so measurements. Quite heavy. So she was about 150 pounds at 5'6". And, and I mean, she's about, that was probably like 20, 25 pounds overweight. By no means was she... I mean, probably below average considering how heavy people in America are. But th this weight loss issue and people exercising and falling a caloric deficient isn't just exclusive to vegan diets. This is more in the context of high carbohydrate consumption, high sugar consumption. Uh, so, you know, you basically, you gained a bunch of weight. You had a bunch of brain fog. You were feeling yes, terrible. Yes, yes. I was uh, just going to say about the mental problems. Basically, I was um, at the beginning you get sort of like a sugar high all the time. So you feel like this is super working for you and it's amazing, makes you feel lively, amazing, awesome. Then you kind of crash. You have this period that you're like, eh. So I actually started developing my depression at this point, which I'm not sure if it's related to to veganism, but it definitely uh, it definitely got worse because of it. So I was having brain fog, I was very snappy, and I was done with this freely diet, and I decided to quit the diet, but not veganism. And I went back basically to my old ways, which is, you know, like restricting calories, and um, decided to just do what I, I know best. So my new vegan diet was uh, ramen, cup ramen. You have these types that taste like pork, like uh, beef. And I love the taste because it has this artificial taste, but it does remind you of me. So I ate these, but they're completely vegan. I was like, oh my God, yes, yeah, something that tastes like meat, but is vegan. And I was eating maybe like, uh, we have these big packages of spinach. So I would have like uh, one package a day with a lot of vinegar, a lot of salt. Um, and I would also eat a lot of pep, like I would also drink a lot of Pepsi light with a bunch of ice inside. So sugarless Pepsi, this big of a cup with a lot of ice. I was craving a lot of ice as well. And I should mention that um, around this time, actually, I did blood work for a variety of just a recommendation from my doctor. And I did see that my suspicions that I had iron deficiencies were confirmed. So for a long time before, you know, being diagnosed with it, I have seen that my face is very pale, very like grayish and um i just feel very weak at times so this confirm it i have iron deficiency but i thought i'm eating so much spinach it's so rich in iron this must help for sure so where's the wrong in that so anyway um i ate like this for a month so the ramen and the pepsi and the spinach in one day i just got struck with like 40 degree temperature out of nowhere um i was in bed uh, for a week and I thought I literally thought I would die because I was peeing blood I didn't know what was wrong with me I couldn't get up 
uh, and like ask for help. My parents were out of the city. I didn't want to call them because then it would ask, escalate in another situation where, you know, I'm doing, um, bad stuff to my body, et cetera, et cetera. So that's at the end, I'm, I'm sorry, that's a hundred four degree temperature for us Americans, by the way, which is insane. Electric, yeah, it's very high. You can die after like two more, one more. I don't know. Anyway, so I thought, okay, this is insane. I must call someone at least. So I called one of my friends and uh, she came by and uh, drove me to the ER. And they basically told me I have kidney stones and I was having a kidney, not failure, but crisis. I'm not sure how to, to say it in English, um, which comes with a very high fever and basically you're peeing away the stones. So I was like, why would that happen? I, I've been eating so healthy. Like what, what I haven't been eating any, you know, super high in, um, just what standardly what they blame on like kidney stones is a bad diet. A bad diet in my perception is a diet full of like meats and fats. That's, that's what I thought at the time. So I was eating this vegan diet that's supreme and I was having like kidney stones. Anyway, um, yeah, just to explain for anyone who's unfamiliar, uh, spinach has very high levels of calcium bound to oxalic acid uh, and drinking two liters of Pepsi a day and eating a pound of spinach every day is literally the best <laughs> way to get like if you can construct a diet for someone to get kidney stones, this would be it like, oh, and alcohol and alcohol as well. I just forgot to mention that, which is another another one on the top of you know, spinach and Pepsi because yeah, you're, you're even more yourself, pressure. You have the high calcium intake, the oxalates. It's really easiest way to get kidney stones by far. Uh, something I noticed is when I was drinking alcohol the next day, I uh, was the, the moments that I would crave animal foods the most is the day after I would binge drink the most. Like I was wanting fatty eggs with butter so much. And, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it. Obviously I would actually panic at the sight of my food, my vegan food, touching something that is not vegan. Um, I was just being all around weird. Although I wasn't preaching veganism to like my friends, I would be the opposite. So I would be like an introvert and be extremely defensive. If, so if someone even managed to say something about it, I would go berserk basically. So at the time I started having also very, um, severe pains in my joints, like where my knees are. Uh, especially when I was dehydrated, I would feel it even more. And I had, I had like very big eye bags. Um, had weirdest thing is I started getting like a very severe acne on my chest and my back, which I've never had in my life. And I thought it was hormonal because usually you just get it on your face if your diet is bad. My face was just like devoid of color. So. You know, that was fine. Uh, I went to, went to a doctor, dermatologist. Yeah. At the point where I went to a doctor, I was still vegetarian. So I was already trans detransitioned from veganism, but I was eating mostly plant based. So I completely quit veganism and vegetarianism at the beginning of 2017. Mm -hmm. I had the, the acne problem from before. Oh, okay. And so I went like twice and the first and the second time, the funniest thing is the first and the second time he basically told me the same thing. He said I was eating or had too much sugar in my diet, which was spiking my insulin, which in turn was basically making my skin overproduce oils. And um, I, I didn't really listen to that the first time because I just, it wasn't something I wanted to hear, you could say. So I just went with what I knew best. And um, at some point, which was, I was already probably like doing veganism for a year. Yes, a year. Solid. I started losing clumps of my hair in the shower, which really, really, really stressed me because I thought, okay, you're losing hair. That could not be in any way related to your diet. It must be stress. As I said, I started developing depression like a few months back. So I was thinking, okay, my depression is getting bad and I'm just feeling more stressed than usual. So that's why it, it starts falling. Um, I was also living with my dad. So instead of living with my mom, I was already living with my dad. And he kept um, telling me to stop doing that. It's super unhealthy. Um, and at the time, he actually started doing keto. And 
he is a very overweight man. So I was like, I'm not going to listen to advice from a fat man. <laughs> but his wife, who is like maybe like four years old, she was never obese. She started doing keto with him and pretty much lost like 20 kilos in maybe like four or five months. Oh, wow. Yeah, and she looked amazing. Two to three but pounds I was still, a week, very fast weight loss. Yeah, but I was still looking at him, you know, I was like looking at him and I was like, no, I'm not taking advice from you. You're, you're still fat. You don't know what you're talking about. So I basically shut them off every time that he tried to speak to me about it. And at the end, maybe like a month or two, uh, into my hair problem, I realized this is not going to stop anytime soon. And I was very desperate because, you know, as as a girl, you don't want your hair, hair to fall off. You, you kind of look... It, with me, the diet was always connected to that um, visual aspect. So you could say that although I was triggered to go into veganism, vegetarianism by the promise of looking better, I was also kind of detransitioned because of that as well. Um, so... I finally started eating some animal foods, first detransitioning back to veganism, which, uh, sorry, vegetarianism, which immediately almost fixed my, my hair issues. So introducing some eggs and some cheese, um, helped me a lot with my hair and my nails, which before that were very brittle and basically falling apart. And, um, I was like, okay, this is like, this is weird. Why is, why is this working? But I think a big part of, of me detransitioning is the fact that um, I stopped like exposing myself to vegan media and, you know, videos in YouTube or articles and stuff like that. I was still eating sugary junk food when I detransitioned. So I completely detransitioned in February 2017. I stopped eating vegan, vegetarian, and I started eating some meat, but I was still with a standard American diet, just I was eating meat now. And immediately, as I said, my nails started growing, my hair completely recovered. I was um, feeling just more energetic. I was still very depressed though, which didn't really clear up until up until when I started doing intermittent fasting. Um, so uh, what else should I say? So to, to sum things up to this point, you know, you were very young, you, you had an orthorexic behavior due to the trendiness of vegan vegetarian throughout your high school years, really just variations of the vegan diet from raw till four, mm. and then just like a junk food vegan diet essentially deteriorated your health to the point where, you know, you're losing your hair, you're having all these issues, and you finally start eating animal products again. When I started eating animal products, the thing is, I didn't fix my acne it fixed my nails my hair i didn't fix my acne actually my acne started getting worse on my back and chest so i went to the doctor again the same doctor uh, funny enough it just happened to be the same doctor and i wanted from the cream that he gave me last time because last time he did tell me stop sugar but i'll give you a cream it's not gonna solve your main issue it will solve the the symptoms for a while so i was like i went there and i wanted the cream again but he said that he will give me the cream but shouldn't I consider treating the problem at the root? So I was like, okay, what do you mean? And he said basically that it's sugar again. And uh, he was like, don't you know, there's a lot of uh, misconception about sugar. We always like, you millennials always try to be um, gurued or uh, coached in something. Uh, do your own research. There's a lot of stuff that hides how sugar is so, so, so bad for you. And actually now it's promoted. Um, fat is promoted to the, to the villain. And he said, it's not like that. You should at least try it for like a month, not eat sugary stuff. Uh, don't even, don't even remove the, remove the fruits. Leave some of the fruits. Just don't eat any processed foods and processed sugars and white, um, you know, pasta and stuff like that. And you see the difference. So I was like, okay, I got the cream and I started cutting out sugar and I started also intermittent fasting at the time, which was, as I said, the beginning uh, of, no, maybe the middle, that was already maybe the middle of 2017. I started doing that and maybe within three, four months, I went back to my original weight. So 55, which is normal for me. And um, 
I was feeling much better, less cravings, uh, less brain fog. I was still having uh, a lot of like ups and downs uh, with um, with blood sugar, so I was feeling very very weak in the morning because when you when you still incorporate like I was maybe eating maybe a hundred two hundred grams of carbs still from sources I thought were uh, long lasting, so like brown breads and brown pastas, it still makes you hungrier during throughout the day. I've noticed so. At um, at the end of 2017, um, I started researching um, different ways of eating again, and I stumbled upon this channel called Wild I've Learned, which advocates strongly on keto diets and just fat-based, fat-heavy diets. Started looking into it, but it took me some time before I was convinced. Although the science of these videos is much, much, much. Um, better than the pseudoscience that you see in the vegan videos. Uh, I realized that actually people can, people can pretty much um, coach you into an opinion they have with throwing like pseudoscience like this and they just, they just don't, um, they don't expect you to actually do your own research. So yeah, uh, after that, uh, pretty much now what I'm doing now, which I started doing heavily um from the from the middle of 2018 i started cutting back sugar seriously and then towards the end of 2018 i found your channel i found michaela peterson which is the daughter of jordan peterson i'm pretty much sure everyone knows them and i also found severage i think it's pronounced so i started watching your videos so what do i what do i get from it well there's this girl that basically fixed a issue that was mm, pretty much going to end her life. You know, she has very severe autoimmune disease, which was cured by essentially what is a keto diet. Um, you have, you and Savage that pretty much, well, you provoked a lot of my opinions on a lot of different topics. And when I first found you guys, I also thought you were kind of crazy because when do you expect to see like a title with, uh, eating raw meat all day, you know, it's kind of crazy. I'm sorry. But now <laughs> I start incorporating that too. And I can definitely see why you're doing this. So um, the reason for me to start looking into something more sustainable is because in 2018, in the beginning, I got pregnant and um, my anemia got very bad. So I would like literally randomly pass out, which I didn't know why, why it wasn't. I went to the hospital for maybe 10 days. And they still did not give me um, a clear answer in my exit papers from the hospital. It didn't really say why I was there, what was wrong with me. And even after exiting the hospital, I still had throughout my pregnancy just random dizzy spells. I would just pass out. I would feel really, really bad, black out and pass out. Um, I even had a, ca a case where I passed out on the, on the bus stop and people had to, you know, help me. And I was okay. I was doing something not completely right. So I need some sustenance. I checked my blood levels a few times because you are required to do that when you're pregnant. And always, no matter how much uh, meat I was eating, I still had very, very low iron. And I was wondering why this is, which obviously now I know is because you don't absorb iron, iron so well when you also eat uh, grains and stuff with it. Yes, yes, exactly. So I started at the end of my pregnancy to eat a lot of raw fish, despite it being sort of a taboo. And a lot of people would criticize me about it, but I ate um, daily meats. Like, you know, also the meats here we have is um, dried meat. So you have this pork and beef mix that you dry. And I ate like, I ate them by the bunch, literally. I was craving them so much. Also, you're forbidden to eat um, cheeses, like aged mature cheeses. But I also ate these. I thought maybe that my body knows a bit better than what is said. And I also knew that the reason people say, oh, don't eat raw fish, don't eat uh, dried meat is because of the b potential bacteria. Um, so I just managed to, to get stuff from a cleaner source and I thought I would be sorted. And I was. There's absolutely nothing wrong with my baby. 
it's actually very big and I, I I'm breastfeeding it to this day and I'm planning to continue. But I have the point is I have a lot of milk. There's nothing nothing wrong with my diet that in any way reflects on me or my child. So at the end of the pregnancy, um, I was already like after the pregnancy, I was uh, free from any food aversions and stuff that that comes with pregnancy. So I could finally actually begin doing something that I could control, you know. Um, so I started doing keto at the end of 2018, so December, uh, doing it seriously, I mean. So I would eat meats cooked in various ways. I would eat some veggies, like maybe 5 or 10% of my daily intake is vegetables and just for taste. Um, and a lot of milk. We have very good sources of milk and pork here. So we have farms with uh, basically Bulgaria's most consumed meat is pork. From a farm, it's very cheap and very delicious to buy pork. The pork is like a deep red color. It kind of looks like a Wagyu beef. I'll, I'll show you pictures. And it also has very, very good variety and uh, consistency of milk and butter. Uh, the milk is amazing. It has this thick layer of, I don't know how you call it. Cream, yeah, like cream. cream, cream, yes. Um, and beef, not so much. We have mostly cattle for, for work here. Uh, but I just, I just do it most in pork and I still get amazing results. Um, my, my iron level is pretty much top notch, which has never been since I was 12. Since, since basically I started doing any type of blood work that I remember, I always had low iron. And I also started craving like some raw meats. I would eat some of the beef that I buy, like the more, more expensive one from the farm that I know is fresh. I would eat it with a bit of soy sauce because I'm still getting used to the to the taste of raw meat. Salmon, I have no problem eating, um, you know, raw. Although it's not like local food, but we do have, Bulgaria does have a coast, so we do have source of fatty Mediterranean fish. Uh, we also, I kind of, kind of think Greece is also in our region, so you could say it's kind of local, you know, it's not that far away. And yeah, I just, I haven't never felt better. I mean, I have a, a infant that's three months old and I get maybe like four or five hours of sleep and I feel amazing during the day. I have no ups and downs. It's just like a steady line. You could say maybe I'm getting like sleepy thoughts earlier than usual. And also maybe another, I wouldn't say a negative. It's actually a big positive because if you haven't heard from this story, I kind of had a problem with alcohol. So I have less craving for alcohol. I don't want to drink it. I don't know why. Maybe because you get much worse hangovers when you're doing keto, which I don't know why this is. Maybe you can explain. But yeah. It's, I did, it's yeah been, the, I, I've actually heard of explanations to why people stop craving alcohol on keto. I'm not sure if it, it tied in with blood sugar or the pancreas or um, whatever it was. It could have been a caloric thing too. I, I don't remember the exact conversation, but... I know there's definitely, you know, a few places where you kind of, you know, you were really fortunate in the sense that your doctor gave you some excellent advice. Like if you went to a doctor here in America, that's the last thing. So, you know, the last thing a dermatologist would be saying to me would be, oh, remove sugar from your diet. You know, it's dermatologist never said to me that, you know, diet was any way related to my acne. It was always just give me a, a ointment or give me a pill or whatever it was. And the thing I like you brought up is the food quality. And you go into any American supermarket, you have this, it's like pink, almost white pork that is not what meat is supposed to look like. Pork is supposed to have that deep red, almost purple color, just like beef. And even beef in the supermarket, it's like a light red. And beef is supposed to be a deep, dark, almost purplish color, just like game meats are. Uh, you, you, did you want to tell them about the chicken soup as well? Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to mention first that... Um... The quality of the meat here in the supermarket is pretty much the same as you say, but um, there is definitely more access to quality beef even in the supermarket. However, I would I would like go on a whim and say that even though I did not begin veganism because of the ethical side, now my whole perspective because of your videos as well has changed a lot, and also the way that I think about stuff. Um, so here, there's a lot of uh, hunters okay so one time I was speaking to this hunter we have 
uh, near my village, we have a hunting group that they go and hunt boar. So wild boars is the most commonly hunted thing here. And I was talking to him and I asked him, don't you feel sad when you kill one of these animals? You know, some of them have little boar children. And he said, basically, not unless you use all of it, then I have no remorse. So I was like, what do you mean you use all of it? And he said, okay, so let's say you kill an animal as a trophy. You take a picture and you're just flaunting that you killed something. Yes, that's not very cool, you know. But when you kill an animal like us, we literally strip every piece of meat, freeze it, eat what we can't have any space anymore to freeze. And the skin is uh, in front of the uh, fireplace to keep, you know, the kids warm or whatever to play there. So every piece of that animal literally is used in something. Yeah, we call it nose to tail over here. That, that's something, that's something that obviously not every person in their daily life can do, but the way that you can do it, I thought, okay, how can I, a city living person can do something similar to that? So I can just use farms, um, that are owned by, you know, a few people. First of all, I'm supporting smaller businesses, which is amazing because here in Bulgaria, we have a problem that big business, basically supermarkets crush our entire market. And second of all, I'm actually doing something ethical. If you look at it from this perspective, that you're, you're thanking the animal for providing you the necessary nutrients and you're eating it from a clean source. So I was like, okay, that's totally fine by me. Now that's, that's exactly my opinion now. And with Bulgaria, as you said, the quality of food here is really amazing. You have pork that's, as I said, red, streaked with fat. Um, the chickens here you can buy from a farm as well. My granny uh, raises chickens. We have maybe like a hundred and they're not as big as your store-bought chicken is like this. And the homemade chicken is maybe like this when it's cooked. Um, my granny makes like a thick chicken soup. The way it's made here is that you put all the organ meats in the in the broth the broth is from it basically juices all the chicken for like two hours by they, they boil it and all the juices just like combine very well you also fortify the broth with a few uh, egg yolks and some milk and this when you drink it when you when you eat it basically the old people say it can literally revive dead and Yes, when you do have like a flu or something, I'm not kidding. It literally can can make you from like drowsy to pretty much energetic and back to health. So yeah, uh, I I think that especially for this region, um, the keto way of dieting, of actually not dieting, it's a lifestyle, is the best because it's how we used to eat many many years. And I actually dug out something very interesting for you today. Um, the pra. Um, predecessors i'm not sure how to say that word basically the ancestors here my ancestors mm-hmm. um they're called the proto-bulgarians or proto-bulgars uh they were a nomadic uh nomadic uh, tribe and i'm very interested in history it says in the history um in a lot of history sources it said that they associated farming uh, because there were slavs here before them so when they came here they saw the slavs doing their farming uh, but they associated farming the earth with dead people. So meddling with the soil meant dead people, and they thought it would it bring uh, it brings like bad energy. So they mostly and mainly ate meat, including horse meat, which is very popular here as well to eat. Yeah, that's quite interesting in my opinion. It's a metaphor. Yeah, no, <laughs> eat <mean>, veggies, <laughs> die. <laughs> it's it's interesting. A lot of if we look at any indigenous diet for any period of time. Uh, especially pre Neolithic Revolution, the you know the presence of animal foods in the diet is always something that has you know really been where we we've extracted all of our nutrition, and then the plant foods always come as a necessity or like a secondary aspect. But uh, this is a really unusual story in a sense that you were fortunate enough to kind of not really suffer too much from the detrimental aspects of the vegan diet. And that you were guided out of it in a way. You know, unfortunately, we see, you know, a lot of people who end up being vegan for a very prolonged period of time. And just the fact that you found out the importance of, you know, these foods early in life uh, is definitely something to be at least happy about, I think. Uh, 
But how did that in general? I mean, of course, we could probably talk about how crazy your, you know, your vegan days of eating were on the Raw Till 4 diet. But I think there's plenty of examples of that. Oh, just open Raw Till 4 on Google and you see. Yeah, right. But what I wanted to know is how did, I mean, this must have changed your, your life drastically in general. I mean, I can't imagine how, how much like turmoil there was in a sense when you were on the vegan diet, when you're having all these health issues. How did that affect your day today? And and now, how has that changed? Is it almost like you can't kind of, you can't almost believe how different your life is now in a way? Definitely. But also I was, the, my biggest problem with it is I was very vulnerable and I was obviously seeking some sort of quick fix, some sort of thing I can follow. I think that's the issue with most of the vegan followers. So they're looking for something that's, gonna fix all their problem but it, it's just not that think about it logically uh, i was just feeling so drowsy every day feeling happy one one moment when i ate and then feeling very down like 30 minutes after always bloated on the toilet uh and now it's not like that it's sort of like food has not become my obsession like then now it's just something that i do to fuel my body. And yes, sometimes I do indulge in like preparing something that's like flavor dense or something, but I'm not super crazy and obsessed with food. And all, all my teenage years are characterized by an eating disordered behavior. And I think veganism just fueled it further, which the keto diet and let's say paleo diet kind of reverts it. Okay. So even though to people like, uh, outside of it it would seem like an extreme diet um it's not I, I always counter this with i don't know who i've heard saying this maybe you but do pandas have an extreme diet by eating only bamboo no because that's what they're supposed to eat so i don't really think about food that much and that's the reason i wanted to share this because i my biggest pain with veganism is that it actually seeks after vulnerable teenagers and it seeks after the weak of mind, the the ones that want to be coached into something. And that's really, really dangerous when you're talking to teenagers, when you're talking to moms that are expecting kids. Uh, that, that's something that like li- li- really, really bothers me. Uh, vegan pregnant women, vegan uh, breastfeeding women. I mean, I'm breastfeeding and my baby is literally gaining a kilo a month, which is insane, but it's still not fat. You know, it's, it's gaining weight in that way that babies are healthy and my doctor's always giving me compliments. And I think it's because my breast milk is very nutrition dense. And I look at people and I look at the vegans that even would refuse for the child to eat even adapted formula because it's made from cow, cow milk protein, I think. So yeah, it's, it's really disgusting. I mean, you know, th- there's many opinions out there about the vegan diet in general, about the ke- benefits of the keto diet in general. But the fact that you would deprive someone of nutrition, let alone a child, is is what does not sit well with me. And I think one big issue with these vegans, and I mean, I'm sure you have many negative things to say about Freely and what she's doing in regards to poaching vulnerable young people. But one huge issue in regards to veganism is that there's not anything with as much drive behind it in a way. With vegans, you have all these propaganda-like documentaries. You have all these people pushing the agenda to such unbelievable extents that the likelihood it's going to be met by anything of that magnitude is it's there's nothing else. People aren't out there pushing. There's no paleo. There's no keto. There's no you know stop eating sugar. Uh, I mean, there are stop eating sugar documentaries, but you know the point is no one is like putting on a a suit of cucumber armor and a broccoli spear and going around and trying to convince people to, you know, that's what they're doing with veganism. Oh, we used to have uh, something like this here. They would put themselves into like, you know, the type of box they put meat in, in the store with cellophane on it. So they undress with like bras and panties and they put themselves into this on our main street here in Sofia. And people made fun of them actually. Here, the movement is not very famous, not very popular. I'm talking about general mass between m- m- people from like 13, 14 to my age. It is quite popular. So, yeah. But um, just to put it 
shortly. I, I think I did myself a favor. And another thing is, I also, I also seem to notice that when you, you know, when you come off the vegan diet, you kind of do it in secret, which is what I did because of the insane backlash that you have. Oh, it's, it's Obviously, yeah. I don't have any followers or anything that I really care about, like, uh, you know, famous cases last month, uh, few, few, the last few months, but still people really do criticize you because you're a killer all of a sudden. So, yeah. I mean, we, we see this time and time again. And the way that vegans respond to the I am no longer vegan people, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, the, the few that have happened in the past few weeks, they've literally had to take down the videos because of the backlash. And it really shows how much of a cult and how indoctrinated these people are. They also did it. They, they, also, they also did the transition before putting up the videos. I mean, they put up the videos like some cases even years later. Why is that? Because because of because of exactly that insane backlash that. That's what gets me though. These people are eating meat for months to years and no one knows about it. I, I'm very curious how many closet vegans there are. Or what is it? Would it be closet meat eaters that are posing as vegans? I'm sure there's plenty of them on YouTube. Uh, it's it's crazy. And you know you're not you're not sitting there watching them what they eat. And you're not with them in the supermarket. You really don't know. Uh, but which which brings me to the to something. And finally, I want to add that actually, yeah. uh, I was on a forum. Someone said that um exactly freely is someone that actually you know promotes that now she's living off greed she is taking showers in the rain and st stuff like that and in reality she actually lives in a gated community in ecuador she has like a fucking lawnmower in the back of her video someone is like you know doing her garden and she has all these electronics and electricity and clean water and meanwhile maybe like two streets down people are starving and but she has no... They're picking the food for no... her. They're picking the food for yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. But uh, I hear the baby in the background, Danielle. Did you have Yeah, a actually, or... she's kind of like upset now. So I was just going to say that maybe we should wrap it up a bit. Okay, yeah, no, that that's fine. Uh, I'm going to let you go take care of your daughter. But uh, did you have any final notes you wanted to say overall? I mean, I, I think we're just really, you know, trying to punch through a brick wall here, unfortunately. I mean, the more stories that come out, you know, the more evidence we have against it. But uh, I think stories like yours and stories that, you know, other girls on my channel have told are really helping people wake up in a sense. And you're giving them the context of something they can relate to. You know, maybe there are some young girls or young boys that watch this video and they open their mind to the idea that there are other options in the diet. Uh, this yeah. They're having what they're suffering from. You know, it's not that they're not doing the vegan diet properly. It's simply something that cannot be done properly. Uh, there was a comment on one of Sverage's videos yesterday. Uh, there's mm. no right way to do a wrong thing. And I don't think there is any better way to put it. But, uh, Danielle, did you want to say anything to uh, Frankie Boy's subscribers here today? Just Anybody think about wants? it. Like five, six hundred years ago, the fruits, the way that they look now... Uh, they didn't look like that at all. And also, don't eat something you can't eat raw, you know? How do you really eat rice and starch raw? You can't. And I know it's kind of crazy to say and think at the beginning, but meat, dairy, uh, we always used to consume it raw. So just think about that. Think about logical, the logical perspective of things and do some research. Be open-minded. That's maybe all I want to say. So yeah. Uh, no, Daniel, thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, thank you. Is there any, anywhere you wanted them to, you know, are you on Instagram, you on Twitter, any contact, anything? No? Just yeah, I do have an Instagram. Yeah. I do have an Instagram. We'll put that in the comments later. Yep. Okay. So if you guys want to follow Daniel on Instagram, are you going to post pictures of the pork for them? Are you going to post pictures of the pork for them? I will. I will. Okay. All right. So definitely check that out, guys. But uh, thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. Uh, there are a bunch of resources that will be in the comment section below. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Into screen. Uh...